Peace Oakland, we're back with one more candidate interview. We did this one already, so my apologies. Uh, for some reason, the video did not record properly, and you can't see me, but you can hear me, but you can see Kanitha. And so we're not going to have her answer the questions that we already asked her, but we're going to ask her some new questions that are somewhat similar for those of you who are getting to know her for the first time. So without further ado, let's bring Kanitha Maturi to the stage. Kanitha, good morning. Thank you for coming back, and my apologies again for the slip up. Well, thank you for having me again. Well, your show is always so amazing and informative. So I couldn't wait to say, well, we have to redo it if it's not right. Oh, well, you know, sometimes you get a second chance. You didn't ask for the second chance. You know, unlike our mayor who needs two or three chances to get anything right. But this is my fault this time. Um, and so I didn't want to play it without my video, but I will release it uh, as a podcast for anyone who wants to hear Kanitha answer the same question that the other at-large candidates were asked. In all fairness, we will post it so you can compare her uh, in similar fashion to the other candidate. So I'm going to get right into it. Um, here's my first question. 21 days left. How are you feeling? No. Oh. Well, um, you know, um, how, how am I feeling? Well, I'm feeling good. I feel that um, I have a lot of respect for everyone who have ran a campaign before. Um, <laughs> ah, <now you> like, know. <laughs> like yourself, um, for example. Um, I understand how the whole um, political system work and What's the influence that the PAC have and all the other stuff that I'm learning for the very first time? Um, I now look at my ballot very differently than the way I used to look at them. Uh, what else uh, that I learn? I learn, um, you know, to pretty much just be uh, to do research. My whole entire uh, campaign so far, I now stop talking about what I was talking about, but mainly just to ask voter to really do their homework on their candidate and if they want a different city they have to vote differently and they cannot just listen yes and they can't just listen to the news anymore the news is all very um how would you say it? very skew very particular to a certain way i say, I say controlled correct correct <laughs> exactly you know um yeah, so very, uh, so far, the only, um, I've been interviewed by a couple new media, and I think only two so far put out on me. Um, it very, very little if they were to interview me, yes or no. So, you're, yeah. Your audio is loud, but it sounds a little robot I don't know if we can fix it or not. If not, don't worry about it. The audio is fixed. Okay, now, Kanita yes. looks great. She sounds great. It's all good. Yeah, I can so hear you. Yes. I can hear you. So here's what, here's what you were just saying. You've only had two new media cover you and no legacy media. Is that correct? Well, um, so, well, the Mercury and the East Bay Time, I don't think they did anything yet. They did interview me and a bunch of candidates, but I haven't seen anything written up on any of that. Or maybe, you know, I've been so busy, I haven't seen it. I only saw Oakland Side and The Chronicle. Uh, on the side, some information is, is correct and some are not correct at all. Uh, San Francisco Chronicle did a little bit better on their homeworks wise. <laughs> uh, let me, side, let me ask you a question then. So you've had no interviews with the news about running? Oh, I do. I do. But if they choose to publish it in a certain way or a certain way, it's very interesting. That's what my journey and experience are. Okay, yes, I, had, uh, I had the same, which is why I, I have the show, because I, I do agree with you that the media doesn't do a very good job, uh, and that they're extremely controlled. But here's another question that I have. You know that legally, the news stations have to offer you equal time to other candidates. So what you need to do is you need to do some quick research, hire someone who does public relations, like mm -hmm. me. And they will let you know, they will do some research for you and let you know if, let's say KTVU gave LaRon Armstrong or Rowena Brown a full interview where they interviewed them back and forth. They have to do that for you too. 
actually by law, it's a, it's a law called equal time for local um, news stations so that they cannot control the perception of elections, much as if, as sort of like what you're complaining about right now. And so, although like they sometimes don't respond, you can sue them. And so you need to send a formal email. I can send you a template if you like that you can adjust to your needs and then make sure that you can document the appearances of your opponents. So you can say, you know, they were on here, here, they had this much time, it was put in this format and I've had none of that and federal law requires you to do the same. And then they will have to schedule you for an interview. But if you don't ask, then they don't yeah. have to do it. And so you, the, the first burden is on you, the candidate, to request equal time. There's no like watchdog or oversight committee that does it. But if you complain about it as a candidate, then you can't get that fixed. Okay, so I have, I have, um, let's get yeah. serious here. No, you have, you have yeah. something to say? Yeah, so, so I don't know if the main, like, big medias are doing any uh, news on everybody, but, um, you know, I'm just, uh, I think everyone just kind of scrambling. It's a, it's an interesting year for sure. Like, uh, I don't know if you noticed the temperature and the feeling. Um, I feel like the voters are exhausted in terms of just like confused, frustrated, um, not sure uh, who they should vote for or who they should trust anymore. Uh, very much like myself as a voter and as a candidate. Um, so I think that the media that's all covering, they're doing whatever they can, but they, they also doesn't seem to want to highlight certain things and highlight certain things. So I, that's what my experience. Yeah, they, treat, and they treat people with kid gloves where they're afraid to criticize them for things that are obviously wrong, like bankrupting the city or... Anyway, uh, I want this to be more about you and not my gripe with... Everybody <laughs> knows I have a bone to pick with the current regime. And I do think that for the most part, if you want change, you need to vote for it. There's only one incumbent that is in the race that I'm asking people to retain. And that's only because... Dominic didn't put together a real campaign. He doesn't seem ready to want to take that job. And I know Dominic Prado. Mm -hmm. And so Noel Gallo is the only person. Other than that, every person I'm recommending has never been elected to office before in the city of Oakland. And I think that that is important. We need new blood from people who are from here and not people who are, you know, here to carpet bag or do whatever their agenda is. What is the best part about running for office? What, tell us what is the fun part about it? Uh, and then I'll ask you the opposite after that. But what's, give us, you know, you're not a full-time candidate. You're a mother and you have two businesses. So what is it like to campaign with all of those responsibilities? And what do you like the most about being a candidate for at large? Well, you know, I never aspired to be a politician. Uh, I chose my career path, even though I study finance, I decided to be uh, to open a restaurant and to become a chef and to serve my community through foods and drink and, and art and music uh, because I love people. Um, this has been a great opportunity for me uh, to get out of my uh, space uh, for, for owning Spice Monkey for 14 years in Howden Market and been on this corner for 17 years. You get stuck in the grind a lot and the, you know, the detail to make sure that your, uh, your budget is balanced and you, know, you still have, uh, you're able to keep people employed and things are keep going. Um, so you don't get out of your zone very much. You know, this has been a great opportunity for me to get out and meet my community in a next level, um, connect with my friend in a different version. Uh, we now no longer talk about food and drink, but we're more talking about like, how do we fix Oakland? <laughs> uh, you know, I in, love in, it. Uh, how to I, fix Oakland. Correct, correct. As you see, my, my poster all over the town is called Let's Fix This. And you know, the campaign is called Love Where You Live. I it's love your sign, by the way. And I have, one, I have one in my yard and I'm putting them up all around <laughs> West Oakland. I appreciate you. Um, you know, I love people. And so hearing them and having to uh, see where the frustration is and where they are at. Um, and uh, it's just been a very uh, enlightening journey for me. And it's been fun. It's been fun to just connect with people in a different version of it, of what I used to be doing for the last 17 years, serving the community in a very different way. 
So that's been a. Uh, so now I want to ask you the opposite. What's the hardest part and the part that you dislike the most about being a candidate for office? Mm, the politic. <laughs> the politic. Oh, it's, it's, it's the knife fight in the phone booth, huh? Correct, correct. And, uh, is a, it's a contact sport, Kanitha. You know this, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very different. It's very politic. You know, you're 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 not sure who's telling the truth or who's telling a little bit of a lie into the truth or or just lying altogether. I have no Are idea. You, you, so, mean, you mean other candidates? Yeah. You know, like certain thing you're just starting to question oh, no, a they're certain. Lying. Thing. They're lying. We fact check them. They're lying. In particular, <laughs> Charlie Wong. Charlie Wong is lying, and I don't mind saying this on record. She's lied several times. She's been fact checked. I'm calling her the George Santos of Oakland at this point. She needs to clean it up. Charlie, if you're listening to this, stop lying to people. We caught you. Kanitha, you fact checked. You you haven't lied once. You know what most people say about you is that you're one to watch in Oakland politics. And they're really oh. excited. And and they say that you get other people excited. And to me, that is the hallmark of, I don't like to say politician, but of a good leader. If you're a good leader, you excite other people to want to work for you. And it doesn't matter what anyone else says, uh, even people who I don't like. Let's take Cat Books. I was working for Cat Books when she ran for mayor in 2016. I believe in her, right? For better or for worse, she was a good leader at that point, and she was able to get people into her mission. Um, we all woke up and realized she was a terrible person, but that notwithstanding doesn't take away from her talents. I like to be an objective person. And so you're a very talented leader in that you're able to get people to work for you excitedly and put in work for you. But there's, there's a serious question about effectiveness. You got two businesses, two two daughters, right? And they're, they look like they're teenagers <laughs> in your photo. Are they teenagers? Yes, yes, teenagers? 14. Oh. Whew. Two <laughs> teenage daughters. Yes, like yes. Four okay. more jobs. So let's say you got like six jobs, two jobs per daughter. And <laughs> then you will have the very important job of at large, which you to win. How do you plan to manage that time? Now, I understand that, that at large, it pays, you know, low six figures, but it's not a full time job. And it's by no means enough money to sustain yourself with two children. And so it's, should be a full-time job, but it kind of pays like a part-time job. What do you do to, what's your plan to balance all of this to make sure that you're actively doing all of the work that people are going to expect you to do if you were to win the at-large position? Well, uh, collaboration and teamwork is very important. And, you know, making sure that you have that in place is, is the is the success in life in general. Um, I was married for almost 20 years. My ex-husband, which is a uh, guy, Carmi, uh, you know, um, he's amazing. Uh, we both talk every day in terms of uh, being on the same page as a parent. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sadly, he doesn't live. He doesn't want to live in America. But, you know, he's still a great person. And I think that's given me the ability to be a mother. Um, and I see my girl quite often. And it's it's amazing. And we, we, we do a lot of. Um, WhatsApp and we checked in and we planned together. So those are for the family side is very um, important. Same for the business. You know, I have staff that have been with me for 10, 12, 14 years. And of course, we have the reposition and making sure that, uh, you know, some of the staff from Spice Monkey that's still here are now working on a different job description and doing different duty altogether, but they're still here. And so I'm very blessed in terms of having them pretty much running the market for me. Um, you have staff with you for over a decade. Another testament of an effective leader is that people are willing to work for them long term and not want to seek other opportunities. Very good. Um, so Oakland has problems, big, big, big problems. What do you think is the biggest problem facing Oakland right now? I know there's a lot, but if you have to pick the top one, you got to triage when you're in times of crisis. So let's talk triage. Number one problem that you plan on addressing day one as at large. 
Well, um, I say with a with a business background, uh, studying numbers and finance, and uh, all my main focus is all about revenues and uh, and money, right? Uh, it takes funding for everything to 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 make to, to work, especially service. Um, for a city of like Oakland that is very rich in cultures and and uh, and have a lot of different types of business and very diverse and a great city. Uh, we also have a lot of service and, you know, some service uh, makes uh, makes revenue and some doesn't and it'd be needed because it's essential. Um, so we have to kind of look at all of that, but funding and right now we're in a budget crisis. Um, a lot of the, what's going on in the city of Oakland is what's going on in a business is pretty much, you know, it's down uh, where uh, the, Oakland is in debt is uh, the budget is a disaster. Uh, we need someone who take a look at that and said, wow, okay, we need to start with our top liability and what does that look like and how can we get that down, right? And how do we negotiate that? Um, is it with helper, like, you know, we be old too and the pensions and everything else or, uh, you know, uh, what 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 is there that, you know, I never work in city hall yet, but we need to look at it in like very much like a business and or else we can't afford all the service that we have, right? And we can't pay for anything, literally. And this is the tough question. And I think that the current leaderships are not really addressing because it's not, no one wants to talk about like, we're going broke, right? And what does that look like? Broke. Yeah, we have to get our house in order. We got to get our affairs in order. And what does that look like? For me, uh, running my business for 17 years, we went through a couple of that, you know, um, 2008 downturn when I just opened my restaurant. Everybody mm -hmm. was laid off and everybody, all my regulars said, you know, they have to move out of the Bay Area because they can't afford it anymore. We have a mini version, I think it's like 12. And then we have, you know, all the riot and putting all the stress on the small local business. And then you got um, the the whole like all the building being in downtown approved all at once. Like, you know, all the small business couldn't weather that because all the street was being jackhammered and you can't even go through like Spice Monkey. We have to pivot and change our concept dramatically. We close down all our lunch shift. We go heavy, heavy on performing. So we brought on live music, comedy shows, become a destination. I remember that. That's right with the car park carport stuff area yes yes in order to, to survive. innovate in order to keep your revenue going and stay in business basically is what you're saying correct correct you know instead of just you know raising more tax on properties or on business fees which is killing all the small business no one can keep up with the rising costs and how much can they charge their customer more, right? But anytime the fees goes up, and anytime a new department with the new fees goes up, it's it bear onto the small business, and the small business have to charge their customer. The people Absolutely. who visit, you don't you don't enjoy the economies of scale as your larger corporate partners, and some of them are even failing and, and leaving the market. I have a question about the money before I get to my last couple of wrap up questions. We got about seven more minutes. Have you seen this article? Yes, by Tim Gardner. Um, okay. Yes. Did you read it yet? I have. I have. It's a. Uh, it's it's a. Uh, um, I'm glad that he followed up with that. The very first one that he dropped, it was just kind of like a bomb. Like, oh my god, right? <laughs> Where mm -hmm. are we? Like, and it's so much detail. It's like, it's almost like a science research with lots of reference, right? And you're just like, oh my God, why I didn't have anybody talking about this? And you know, for me, someone had to balance my budget and in order to stay in business, I'm just like, wow, how does the city of Oakland like last this long without anyone addressing this? And why do we have, um, you know, current leaderships are not prioritizing this as their like life is depending on it. You know, so I'm just kind of. Know, well, I don't know. That's a good question. It looks like the, because they want to create the perception that everything's fine because then they want to escape accountability. You know what I feel about our current leaders? They want all the power. They want no accountability for what they do, and they want full autonomy. To me, that sounds like a tyrant. And it's really alarming. And I've been talking about the emerging totalitarianism that's been coming out of City Hall for several years now. I want to put one more thing on the screen because I forgot about this. That's you. Oh, yes. That is you. you wrote a 
beautiful, <laughs> beautiful article. Well, Could you thank tell you. Tell us for... a little bit about this article. Um, I can't. I can't. I'm only going to scroll through it. Go to the Oakland Report. It's called "Love Where You Live: An Oakland Business Owner Journey from Crisis to Civic Duty." Talk a little bit about what inspires you to write this article, and sort of what's in it for people who haven't read it yet. And then I've got one last question for you. And then we got to get back to work. You got 21 days. You got. You already got my vote. You got to get other people's vote. You got to get back out there in the streets and get these votes. So what's up with this article? Why did you write it? And what's it about? So, um, you know, a lot of my friends are very confused why I'm running for office, right? Because they never see me that way. So when I'm picking up the phone and said, hey guys, you know, I really need help. Um, campaign is very expensive. Um, they're like, well, Kanita, I thought you're gonna call us and said, hey, let's open the bar back, you know, Spice Monkey, bring back the good time. What is all this? And the great thing about being a chef in downtown and uh, having a very popular bar, I know everybody's an everybody, you know, from politician to entertainer to just everyone, every, everyone. Um, great experience and been, been a, a blessing journey for me. And I'm still here and it's been very, I'm very grateful. Um, so that's uh, when uh, when I was contacted by Tim Gardner and said, hey, you know, I used to be your neighbor. I used to be just down the street from you. And I don't know you personally, but I ate at Spice Monkey for so many times. And I saw the pivot you've been through and you're, you're, you're being able to pivot and create you know, like, would you like to share why you're doing this, why you want to run for office and what you could do for Oakland? And so he offered that, you know, if you could write an article, then I would publish it, help you publish it. And I thought that that would have been a great idea. And, you know, my all my um, my volunteer, my staff, my partner, all of them, they're like, let's do it. Let's contribute. So that's why we came up with the article. And it's in a way it was a great um, I have not. So what really happened, why I decided to run for office was what happened to my dad last year in July. You know, when when you're when you as a business owner and you're just going through the motion, you know, the economy's up, the economy's down, this happened, the wave of crime, you're just constantly learning how to pivot and 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 shift in order to survive. And I've been in survival mode for like forever. And I, I, I don't want to bored you with all my long history from Cambodia and no, I said no, tell us bore, bore us about I mean you're you're when someone says they're a refugee, see Americans say we're expats. We like to mm. be expats, you know what I mean? <laughs> What's yeah. the difference between an expat and an immigrant and a refugee? Three different words. Give us some perspective here. Well um for me, we we did not. Uh, so I don't know if you read the Chronicles said my, my parent and I escaped genocide and I emailed them and I said that that's not true. And now they changed it. Um, so my parent both are very much uh, involved in, in in human right. And my mom work on reproductive right and uh, the right for women to um, which very much what we're going through this big election right now. Um, so she built hospital. She was like the five women at the time was able to get medical uh, uh, degree. My and dad. What, what was, country was this? Cambodia? Cambodia. Cambodia. Okay. So they're both for what they're very, um, I guess, progressive idea to be able to have human have their, their right to speech and the right to elect their leaders. And they were both thrown in prison for that. Um, mm -hmm. And they please parents were in prison in Cambodia for being activists and standing Correct. up for justice. Correct. Wow. Um, and when they the amnesty were, were you actually, a child? Were you born yet? I was born. I was born. Uh, I believe that that time I was about twelve years old, uh, twelve or thirteen. Uh, around uh, 93, 92, This is when it happened. Um, my parent then was got released because of the amnesty and the the um the peace accord and i don't know if you remember when they came to cambodia tried to you know conduct the elections and everything the country was going through chaos there was a lot of a uh, dictatorship still that's all happening then um the country was just kind of uh coming out of civil war situation with pol pot and khmer rouge 
Um, and I was very young, you know, teenager, don't, don't know much, but uh, I remember when my parents um, went through this, they were thrown in prison, they were out, and then they were telling us that we have to leave the country, but they're not coming with us because they have to protect us and they were going to stay back to continue their work. And if you check out my website under Meet, Meet Kenitha, there is a document that uh, I share with everyone. It's, um, it said how I came to America. Yes, and uh, it's a, a paper and my, uh, the, where the US you know, wrote to um, um, the embassy uh, to say thank you to, for accepting us as a uh, humanitarian uh, parole um and you know we were escorted in the airport by un and came to thailand and moved here to live with my uncle so my 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 history with uh, politics is quite and then my mother was kidnapped when i was 17 years old and never came home again um oh no so he, oh my god Kanita, i never knew that yes uh and so for me oh. political it's just been uh, heartbreaking and 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 shattering my family um so i i pretty much said i said i never gonna get into politics it's just so corrupt and crazy and that's why i choose my life as a as a chef and serve my community in a different way um I knew that. so this is personal for you the, the bill, yeah. i mean this has to trigger lots of emotion um especially considering the vitriol that is present in Oakland politics. Now, you've largely been able to escape that because you're so well-liked. And so I haven't seen any smears on you yet. And also because people don't consider you a threat because, believe me, the moment powerful people consider you a threat, they start to treat you a little bit differently. And so hopefully you never go through that. There are some people who never seem to have to deal with that. Um, but, wow, I, didn't, I never knew that. And that is really... Sad. Yeah, so, I'm happy I'm wearing, so, I'm happy I'm wearing sunglasses right now, so people aren't seeing my eyes well up. But I never knew that about you, and um, I don't want to well, watch. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, well, for me, this is pretty much for my dad, um, who very much loved people, just like I am, and he always said, Kanitha, if you wanted to help people, and if you have a good heart and you have good intention, you should do politics." because it will help impact people in a very different way. Um, I said, no, dad, you know, what happened to our mother? <laughs> and you know, my you know, dad. Every, every good politician had to be drugged, kicking and screaming into yeah. the arena. Yeah, and, and my dad. Is a testament. When, when I can't get service also, when he passed away, this is what, really shocked me and said, wow, we live in a city that is the central service is so lacking. When you get robbed, you can't make a report. When a car drive into your uh, your store, it takes 11 months to release a police report. I have to write to uh, the DA office twice. And it's just crazy. And, you know, and I've been robbed what, three or four times now. I, I'm, I don't even bother to make report anymore because nobody have insurance. Uh-huh. See, see, are you listening out there, people? She doesn't even bother to report the crime when her business is robbed because it doesn't matter. And your insurance may go up. So yes. I didn't mean to cut you short. I have another uh, meeting to get to. I'm getting blown up right now, but I'm going to give you one minute. <laughs> Final thought to voters, 60 seconds. Vote for me, whatever you want to say. And then we got to close it out. So the floor is yours, Kanisa. Thank you very much for coming back. Well, thank you for this time to share uh, my feeling authentically. Um, and well, um, voters should vote for me for a couple of reasons. One, I am not tied to any situation and they could do all the background research. It's very important if we want our city to be differently. But of course, we have to vote for people that have the integrity and the accountability, the responsibility and the talent to be able to really take our city back the other way. Mm -hmm. More than ever, Oakland needs so much help and we need someone who's like willing and ready to do that work, which I am because I have so much love for Oakland and as a business owner for, you know, on this block 17 years, but 20 years, I'm very creative. I am uh, not just, you know, under I understand 
finance, which is very important to the city of Oakland. And I also understand service. And that's what we need the most right now, more than ever. And I hope. Amen. That- yes. So I could we really. Hope. So can, yes. I, can I have one final request? After my piece, Oakland, thank you guys for coming. I didn't. Oh, okay. I'm about to say, where my balloon? But also, <laughs> I, I don't have a cover on, so I'm not supposed to do this. But I want to see the quality of your salute from one oh. former service member to another. Let me see how snappy your salute is. All right, all right, the Air Force people. You guys are, you know, you know the Navy, we do it. I mean, we do a little snapping in the Navy. We snap it. We snap it, you know. <laughs> but uh, thank you for your service in the U.S. military. For those of you who did not know, Kanita is a veteran of the United States Air Force Reserve. Um, she is a mother. She is a business owner. And now she has bravely entered the arena of Oakland politics. And for that, I am extremely grateful. The more, I think a healthy political system is super majority people voting and lots of great candidates to pick from. So thank you for that. Let's get back out in the streets. We have a lot of work to do. 21 more days. Please make sure you vote. Peace Oakland once again. God bless you. See y'all later. Your swear it's only up from here. Your swear it's only up from here. Your swear it's only up from here. Your swear it's only up from here.